let's finish off this orientation by writing just a couple of brief Perl programs. I'm going to open up a terminal window. If you are on Linux or OS 10, you will have an SSH client built in and you will be able to just connect from the command line. Let me make this text here nice and large. And if you are on Windows, then you'll need an SSH client like PuTTY that I mentioned before. I want to connect on port 2299 and my, my username is Steve H at pango.cabrio.edu and it'll prompt me for my password. I'll enter. Okay, when you connect, uh, you'll get a banner uh, greeting of some kind. During the semester, six, six weeks uh, for this class, I probably won't be keeping that uh, up, up very updated. So, you know, announcements and things like that you'll see in the uh, course website, not, not here. I do have a reminder here to change your initial password. Uh, for your uh, shell login. Please do that soon. You don't have to do that the very first time you log in, but do that before you s start in earnest uh, programming on the first assignment. To change your shell password, use the password command PASSWD, and it'll prompt you for your current password and then a new one. I won't actually um, change my password right now. Let's write our first Perl program. I'm going to be using the Emacs text editor in the class, and we'll talk a little bit about it during the semester. If you haven't ever used the Emacs text editor before, we have some um, references. The uh, And I'll tell you in today's orientation the two most important commands for you to know. Okay, I'm going to type out Emacs Hello World. And the best way to use the Emacs text editor is with a file name. And if that file already exists, it'll load in and you can edit it. Otherwise, you'll begin editing a new file. So I'm going to create a file called Hello World. That's going to be my Perl program. And remember, Perl params don't have any extension. And we'll start off here with a uh, pound sign or a sharp. And the pound sign is the comment character in both Unix and in Perl. Pound exclamation point or bang slash user bin Perl. Okay, so this is the first line of all Perl programs. All Perl programs have a line that looks something like that. That must be the very first line in your program. If it's not the first line, your program will not work at all. It doesn't matter what comes before that. Anything that comes before that will make your program not work. So get rid of that. And this has got to be the first line. What does this mean? Well, the pound sign means that it's a comment. The exclamation point means it's a special command hidden inside of the comment. And slash user bin Perl is the location, the default location of where Perl is installed on the system. What happens is we're going to mark this file once we're done uh, writing it as an executable file. Then when we run it, the operating system is going to take a look at that first line and it's going to see the comment character and say, oh, I ignore this line. But then it goes ahead and looks at the second character and sees the exclamation point and says, oh, this is a special line. And then it reads the rest, sees that it's a Perl program, takes the rest of the program um, and then passes it to Perl to be executed. So that's what kind of makes your Perl program run. So it's important to get that line right. Pound, bang, slash, user, bin, Perl, all written together, no spaces. Okay, now let's write our program. And you might be saying, where are the classes if you're from Java? Or where are the functions? Where's main? Well, we will be dealing with functions, or also known as subroutines, later in the semester, but a basic Perl program can just be a series of commands, and they will execute one after another. Okay, now, if you're new to Emacs, you can see that I've been using the arrow keys and enter to type my commands, and you can see I've done some other things. The most important things to know are save, which is Control-X, Control-S. Here, I'll put a comment there. Control-X followed by Control-S is save. And the second most important command to know is Control-X 
control C is quit. Okay, so I've, let's do save, control X, control S, and you can see down here, it tells me it saved the programs. Also, the asterisks disappeared. The asterisks tell you that you've made changes since the last time you've saved. And let me go ahead and quit control X, control C. Okay, now I have a text file. Now I need to mark it as executable, so the operating system will attempt to execute it as if it was a program. I'll do that with the schmod command, which is short for change mode. I'm going to set my program to 700. And, um, oh, I spelled that wrong. Hello, word. Okay, well, you have to get the file name exactly correct. All right, so I've set the permissions on that file to 700. And that means that um, I have um, read and write access and execute access to that file. And at this point, now we can invoke it just by its file name, hello word. Okay. Now, um, here we can see the program has um, run, and we see its output, hello word, world. And um, here we can see the prompt is run into the output of the program. That's pretty bad. Um, so that means I output not a complete line of text. All right, let's edit that file and fix that. So here inside print, we can add a new line. I'll save it again, and we can run the program again. And there we can see there's the output is quite a bit nicer. Let's talk about some of the things that make Perl weird. Now, in just a short introduction video, I'm not going to be able to go through all of the things that make Perl weird, but I think I want to point out a few of the key things that you should know. And the first thing is that in Perl, some things that are mandatory in other languages are optional. For example, in both C++ and Java, we know that parentheses always are used with functions and that they surround the parameters to that function. In Perl, no, not true. Let's get rid of the parentheses there and the parentheses there. I'll save, run the program again. Notice because it doesn't get compiled, there's no compilation step. I just make my change and then I run the program again. Notice it runs just fine. Okay. Let's add a variable to the program. We'll learn more about variables um, later in the semester. And except for the fact that the variable name looks weird, this is a line that we could code in C++ or Java. And so let's try running this now. And notice here it says syntax error backslash hello word line six and so here we can see this is the kind of error message that we'll get when we run the program. You'll get more error messages when you run the program and that you, um, because obviously there's not, there's not a compilation step that you know, picks out some of those syntax errors for you. Okay, so what's the problem here? The problem is that I left off the curly braces. When you have control structures like if or loops, you know, for and while and so on, in C++ or Java, the braces are optional, but they're mandatory in Perl. And here you can see now that's um, running. And here I'll change that to 101 and run again. And now you can see this time it did give the output because that condition is true. So they're working kind of like you would expect. All right, let's write one last program. while diamond print. And we'll run this program and what is it doing? It doesn't appear to be doing anything. This is a stupid program. Stop copying me. All right, so here we have a program that's echoing its uh, input back to output. Here I'll do control D for end of file and notice the param. Uh, uh, ends. So here we've written a param that reads in an unspecified number of lines of text and then echoes them back out. How is that possible? Where is the code that makes that happen? 
This is one of the things that um, we're going to notice in Perl. In addition to the, the more operators that we're going to be using than perhaps we're used to in Java and C++, you saw that uh, funny sample program from the uh, humor website BBSpot um, early in the orientation. At the time that was printed, by the way, that was a legal Perl program, entirely legal. I don't know if it still works with the, um, the uh, current version of, of Perl. If you try it out, um, let, me, let me know. So in addition to the use of symbols, Perl has all kinds of strange shortcuts. I'm very glad that you've got the textbook to go through because it's much harder to look at a Perl program and kind of intuit what it's doing because part of what it's doing is left out. So let's take a look at this program. While we can see it's a loop, it's going to repeat something, and we know just based on uh, computer programming that this must be doing some kind of input and this is doing some kind of output. Well, the diamond operator in Perl is uh, an input operator. We can see it's inputting a line of text. Where is it going? It's going to the default variable. Here we have a print command. Notice we're not printing anything. Why would you want to do print and not print anything? So if you say print without saying what you want to print, it prints the default variable. So unless you knew that Perl has this default variable system, it makes looking at Perl params difficult. On the other hand, notice how easy that was to run and think about what it would take in C++ or Java to write a program that reads an unspecified number of lines of text and echoes them back out. Not a, no, not a lot, but maybe that's eight or ten lines of code. And here it's you know three or four, depending on how, how you count them exactly. This is kind of the nice thing about Perl. If you have an idea, if you have a problem that you need to solve, it's simple and you just write the program and it solves the program and then you're done. That's kind of what makes Perl uh, fun and different. And hopefully throughout the semester we'll see that as we um, write programs that are sometimes quite small um, for um, what, what they do. All right, well, I very much look forward to uh, working with you this semester to learn Perl, and um, I'll see you online. Thank you.